So Bob, I'll hand the screen over to you. Okay, <clears throat> thank you, Steve. So um, nice presentation, Rick and Andreas. Um, so I think what, what you um, explained was really true. And um, I start with the question, what's now the real problem in, um, in youth football? And uh, we uh, spoke about maturation, about relative age effect. It's really not the same as sometimes people um, they confuse this. But um, yeah, both I call as uh, talent contaminators. They can increase um, yeah, the unfair situation, the unequal battle. And, and this is true, this is a problem. Yeah, this is a problem. Um, when you see there a late mature player, um, two years um, biologically younger than, um, than other players. When he is also born at the end of the year, you see a real problem when they have to play a football game. But for me, there is more. This is a problem, but the real problem is what you also said, Andreas, the mindset of the coaches. And for me also, the mindset of the directors of the youth academies. They um, often um, think that it's about winning um, youth games today. And then they try to identificate, uh, identify the high performers. And they focus really on team creation. Um, so this is for me not uh, the right way. I think it's better and, and for me the, the point to, um, to look forward and uh, yeah, to identify the high potentials um, in order to win later football games in the future. This means that we need to focus on individual development and not on um, the team creation. So this is, um, for me, a completely different approach. And for me, this is the real problem in, uh, in youth football. So I think we, we really have to focus on uh, late developers in youth football. The most important is a player. We are working with the player. And um, I think the, the reason we have to focus on late developers is because we, we must give them the same chances to uh, the other players. Um, it's a principle of equality. And I refer here to um, a fantastic declaration on uh, ethics and youth sports. And it says that late developers will be offered similar chances to practice sports and be given the same professional attention available to early developers. And I think this is the first point. We need to focus on late developers because it's a, it's a question of equality. For a federation, it's also important. And we, like Belgium, we are an, uh, a small country in the world. We cannot uh, lose one talented player. And uh, so it means that when we focus only on um, yeah, high performers, when they are 14, 15, 16 years old, it's not good. So um, I will start off, show you here a video of Dries Mertens, who was the inspirator of our future project that we started um, 12 years ago. So Dries is um, 18 years old. When you see his face, you think that maybe he's 15, 16 years. He was sent away um, by uh, Anderlecht by Ghent. And here he is playing in the first team of uh, a third division club. Alst in, uh, in Belgium, but uh, you see immediately that um, he's very skillful, his body and ball control is excellent, decision making is excellent, he yeah, has even uh, speed, um, explosivity, and um, okay, this is uh, for us very important to, um, to find this when we are looking talent identification. When you see the career of Dries Mertens, um, you see that um, in uh, 2004, he had four selections with the under 70 team. I was then coach, and I saw Dries as a very, very talented player. But um, we prepared also our uh, European Championship, and it was impossible to um, to play with Dries because with Dries it was impossible. Yeah, to uh, or for Dries it was impossible to perform and even to win games. And watch, he must wait until 24 when he was 24 years old to play for the first time for the Belgian A team. So um, this means we had to think about to change a little bit our system of youth development also. And we started then in 2008 with a future project with our national youth teams. Um, we doubled the, the teams instead of having under 15, only under 15, under 16, under 17. 
We also started with future uh, teams under 15 and 16 and 17. It means uh, teams with only um, late mature players. And we started in 2008. You see there Yannick uh, Ferreira Carrasco, who is now playing for, um, for, for Atletico Madrid. He had also played a lot of uh, times for the Belgian uh, national team. I think he will start also tonight against England. And he was a um, player born in 93. So what was very important now in our future project um, that we offer the same values and uh, the same tactical principles as we do with our uh, normal under 15, under 16, under 17 teams. And uh, we are working with these guys, with these uh, late developers, with the same technical stuff. But my assistant coach, he is here uh, the head coach of the future team. But I also follow, um, of course, the, these guys. And they are very talentful. But what's for us very important is we prepare them also for uh, future national A teams. We gave the, the same program. Uh, there are selection trainings, there are training camps, there are international games, there are participating tournaments. Like, for instance, we have a fantastic formation uh, tournament with the under 16. You see there a player also, Maxim de Perper, in uh, April 2016. He was there playing against Czech Republic. Uh, watch his baby face. You think he is maybe under 13 or under 14. And in um, February this year, he made his debut against Manchester United. So this is our uh, future project that we have. And uh, two years ago, we started also with a big goal project. The big goal project is um, a little bit the same. It's also a, a project with late mature players, but from um, each uh, age group, we uh, we take the ten. Um, biggest potential talents and we are making together an under 16 under 17 big goal team and an under 18 under 19 uh, big goal team this is uh, a project uh, was supported by the belgian olympic and the federal committee they give us uh, financial support we can invest more in the stuff we can uh, give them additional program and this is um, also for uh, belgium sports an uh, innovative project and um, the, the, the Olympic Committee sees this project as a good practice for other sports, but also biological maturation has an import. So what are the targets here of this uh, project? We call this Big Old, because Big Old, we want to prepare them also for the Olympic team under 21. And it's really an individual development program that we give. We do an individual follow-up. We have a coordinator. He visits the club. He is speaking with the coaches. Um, so. We ask also the clubs uh, to give these players, these talentful players, a uh, minimum playing time of 50%. Because when the youth coach um, of an elite uh, club in Belgium, he wants to win a game, he will not play with this player. So it's important also to offer these players enough playing time. And uh, for us, it's very important, of course, that uh, we really look for uh, late mature players. So 90% of the, the squads must absolutely be late mature players. And there must also be continuity in uh, the selection. It means at the end of the season, 80% of the players are uh, still the same. So what we are doing uh, during this uh, project, we also we are also working with um, uh, mental coaches. We do also some tests. And for us, uh, the, the five uh, important criteria of talent uh, identification is learning ability in self-development, winning mindset, explosiveness, body and ball control inside in the game. So uh, we are doing some tests, we are working with the players, we give them uh, some uh, feedback about uh, these five um, competences. Here is a, a game that we played uh, this year against Luxembourg, and you will immediately see uh, how skillful the players, uh, the late mature players are. So watch here how they are building up, one touch, two touch, um, really skillful. Um, very, very good um, decision making. And we are playing against yeah, early mature players. And you will see here the 1v1 duel. And OK, there stop the, yeah, the attack. So this is for us very important to work with uh, this kind of players. So we started in 2008. Uh, we tried to uh, improve our future project. Now we have also our big old players. So what is uh, the effectiveness uh, until today? We are very happy. Uh, when we see, for instance, our um, under-21 team now, and this is the age group, okay, they are um, even powerful as, uh, as other players, 
we see we, we saw four players, four future team players um, in the, the under 21 who beat Wales uh, this week with uh, with five nil. But there are still two uh, other players who are even uh, with the 18 now. So like Yari Vescar, and he made his debut against Scotland um, in 2019, one year ago. And he uh, was an under-16 future player in uh, the season 2016-2017. And uh, also Alex Salomakers this week, uh, Thursday, he started for the first time against Ivory Coast. So these are still players born in 2001 and uh, born in 1999 who still can play with uh, the under-21. So we are Belgium, we are a small country. We hope um, to prepare well our future. And this means for us very important uh, to work with late uh, developers um, in our um, national teams uh, pathway until the 18. So this was a little bit um, the story of Belgium future uh, project. So I'm um, ha happy that I could present this to you, and I'm uh, curious if you are uh, if you have some uh, question about this project.